19. The Bite of the Adder One day had Zarathustra fallen asleep under a fig tree, owing to the heat, with his arms over his face, and there came an adder and bit him in the neck, so that Zarathustra screamed with pain. When he had taken his arm from his face, he looked at the serpent, and then did it recognize the eyes of Zarathustra, wriggled awkwardly and tried to get away. Not at all, said Zarathustra, as yet hast thou not received my thanks. Thou hast awakened me in time. My journey is yet long. Thy journey is short, said the adder sadly. My poison is fatal. Zarathustra smiled. When did ever a dragon die of a serpent's poison, said he. But take thy poison back. Thou art not rich enough to present it to me. Then fell the adder again on his neck and licked his wound. This is a bit of a change. This discourse opens with a story, which is also a parable. We learn that Zarathustra has become so strong through his self-surpassings that even the venom of a poisonous snake cannot kill him. The animals respect him for it, for being true to the earth like they are, and the serpent regrets biting him. Zarathustra, however, thanks him for the venom, but doesn't want to accept it. Apparently, the serpent is not rich enough for his venom to have any real power, and thus it is useless to Zarathustra. When Zarathustra once told this to his disciples, they asked him, And what, O Zarathustra, is the model of thy story? And Zarathustra answered them thus, The destroyer of morality, the good and just, call me. My story is immoral. When, however, ye have an enemy, then return him not good for evil, for that would abash him, but prove that he hath done something good to you. His disciples ask for the moral of the story and the answers with a pun. The story has no moral, therefore it is immoral. Or, at least, it goes against contemporary morality. He then begins to expand on his perception of contemporary morality. He advises them to go against the idea that you should answer evil with good. This will not make things better, but only humiliate your enemy. It is better to do what he did with the serpent. Show that enemy that they did something good for you by challenging you and forcing you to overcome the challenge. And rather be angry than abash anyone. And when ye are cursed, it pleaseth me not that ye should then desire to bless, rather curse a little also. And should a great injustice befall you, then do quickly five small ones besides. Hideous to behold is he on whom injustice presseth alone. Did ye ever know this? Shared injustice is half justice, and he who can bear it shall take the injustice upon himself. This criticizes mainly Christianity, that tells you to turn the other cheek. Zarathustra says that it is not good to be the only one who suffers injustice. Injustice should be spread around. It is easier to bear when many suffer from it. A small revenge is humaner than no revenge at all. And if the punishment be not also a right and an honor to the transgressor, I do not like your punishing. Nobler is it to own oneself in the wrong than to establish one's right, especially if one be in the right. Only one must be rich enough to do so. Contemporary morality claims that revenge is a barbaric impulse, and that we should be better. It therefore gives other reasons for punishing a criminal. Nietzsche contended that no, revenge should actually be the main reason. When someone avenges a wrongdoing, it helps to alleviate some of the pain. Zarathustra adds that when you become rich, meaning strong in spirit, you are capable of owning to a wrong that you have done. It is more noble to admit that you are wrong than to establish that you are right. And if you are this strong, you will also be able to handle the punishment exacted on you in revenge. I do not like your cold justice. Out of the eye of your judges there always glanceth the executioner and his cold steel. Tell me, where find we justice, which is love with seeing eyes? Justice, says Arthusa, should not be based on rationality. It should be based on our instincts, on our sense of justice. What he has been telling us until now is that when justice is served in a way that comes out of our instincts, it is better for everyone, both for the wrongdoer and for the wronged.
But when you administer justice in a cold and rational way, as our courts do, it is gallows justice, justice that subverts and kills the human spirit. The point is that justice is rooted in our nature. Therefore, when we serve justice according to our nature, even the punished party will feel that justice has been done, and society will be better for it. Devise me then the love which not only beareth all punishment, but also all guilt. Devise me then the justice which acquitteth everyone except the judge. We should, then, devise a punitive system that gets rid of judges and is based on our nature, because this will feel like justice to everyone, and no one will feel that they didn't get justice. Note, however, that Zarathustra isn't talking about devising a system, but about devising a love. He is talking about changing our culture, changing our spirit. It is part of the Superman project. And would ye hear this likewise, to him who seeketh to be just from the heart, even the lie becometh philanthropy. But how could I be just from the heart? How can I give everyone his own? Let this be enough for me. I give unto everyone mine own. Zarathustra admits that even when you do act of your natural sense of justice, you will not be completely just. It seems that he says that it is enough if you do your best. Finally, my brethren, guard against doing wrong to any anchorite. How could an anchorite forget? How could he requite? Like a deep well is an anchorite. Easy is it to throw in a stone. If it should sink to the bottom, however, tell me who will bring it out again. Guard against injuring the anchorite. If he have done so, however, well then, kill him also. Thus spake Zarathustra. The anchorite, the one who is lonely, will not be able to do injustice to others, and will thus have to suffer any injustice done to them without being able to revenge. It is going to eat at them, and might lead to disastrous results. Zarathustra therefore warns us not to do injustice to the Anchorite, and suggests that if we do, we better kill them. The overall message of this discourse is this. The sense of justice is primordial, one of our most powerful impulses. If an injustice remains unpunished, it wreaks havoc on the psyche of everyone involved, both the wrongdoer and the wronged. Therefore, injustice has to be addressed, and must be addressed not in a cold, rational way, but in a way that satisfies our sense of justice. It is a message that goes against contemporary morality, but, Zarathustra believes, is actually the most moral way to go.